So in the last video, um, I was looking at some, uh, basically introducing parallel angles and parallel lines and showing how the difference between these three rules and, and how they can be applied to particular situations um, and trying to identify pairs of angles that are corresponding supplementary or co-interior or alternate angles in, in, these, in, these, in this one here. So let's look at some questions. The first one is relatively easy. We should just find the value of x. So you want to pause the video and see if you can work that out. And hopefully you found out it was 72 degrees. Now the reason, why is the reason, what is the reason? Because they're corresponding. So you might write a sentence something like um, x is corresponding to this, to this angle. 72 degrees um so let's have a quick just gonna i, I won't uh, i'm just gonna quickly fly through some of these other ones y is also 60 because it's alternate angle so what is the reason they often ask you what the reason is now eventually you'll start to get notations like this where you have different letters at different points and it's very useful to use the three letter notation here. So we've had a little practice at this one here. If we look at angle, I've labeled angle A. We can call that A, B, K. Whenever you are using the three letter notation, you're drawing, you're drawing the angle and you're drawing it from one point. You're, you're basically drawing two lines, aren't you? From one point to another. So A, B, K, I start at A, go to B, and then go to K, A, B, K. So you can see that that's the angle there. Um, likewise, uh, let's go L, B, C. That would be angle C, OK? So this is a very useful notation to get used uh, to, to, um, to get used to. Uh, let's have a look at some harder questions. I'll just pause the video and find some questions without revealing the answer. So here's an interesting one. Um, we have more. We have multiple lines going on here, which could throw you a little bit. What they've done is something that they do in a lot of um, geometry questions is they've used these little dashes on the lines. Now, what it means is that this line is the same length as this line. If they had um, maybe they did that, like two lines, then that is saying, and then they would maybe do another one like up here. And they're saying that that line is the same length as that line, but not the same length as these. So it's just like a bit of notation to let you know that this line is the same length as that line. Now, uh, so what we're going to do in this question is we've got to find angle Y. So uh, how do we do this? Well, We've got, uh, we know that that's 154. We can use the alternate angle rule and say that that is also 154, okay? So we could say that using alternate angles, we can say that CRQ is equal to RQT, okay? And they are alternate angles, okay? So often you're asked why, you know, explain your reasoning, and that's your reasoning. Uh, next thing I would do is use this, uh, the fact that these two lines are the same length, and I can say, well, therefore, this triangle here is an isosceles triangle, okay? So I could, if I want to write it down, I could say triangle RQT is isosceles. And if it's isosceles, then that would mean that this angle and this angle is the same. So whenever you when it's actually that's another good point. When we when we have an isosceles triangle, um, and we say it's these two lengths are the same, <clears throat> then it's these angles that are the same. Okay, you can show that with drawing two lines. Um, so not like this angle and this angle. So we how do we know it's going to be the angles between one of the identical sides and the non-identical side and the other identical side to the non-identical side. These two angles are going to be the same. 
Um, anyway, so these two angles are the same. We know that that's 154, and we also know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we can, if we, uh, so what can we do? We can say, maybe we just do show it working out 180 minus 154. That's going to be equal 26, so 26 degrees. Um, and we can see that that is going to be shared, that 26 is going to be shared across these two angles. So therefore, they're going to be 13 degrees each. So that means that that's 13 degrees, and so is that. Uh, but the reason why it's important here is because we can see that this angle and angle Y are on a straight line. So now we can do another 180 and minus 13 degrees. That's going to be equal to Y. So Y is therefore equal to uh, 167 degrees. Okay, so yeah, so we a lot of the time with angles on the parallel lines, you have to apply uh, other rules, uh, and you might have to apply more than one rule. Let's, uh, I'll find a, a harder one again. I'll just pause the video. Okay, so what we've got to do this time is find angle X. We've got all these letters, and these capital letters, they use, I think they always use capital letters to represent different points. So just to be clear again about this, um, which will help us with the three letter notation, uh, that would be point B, that's point E and so on. I guess this would be point C, point F and so on. Okay. And uh, we've got, um, we've got three parallel lines now. Okay. Well, um, let's think about how would we solve this? We've got an angle uh, X. Well, C is parallel with F, but it's also parallel with S. So we could um, we could work out a few different things here. So we could how could what we're going to do here? Well, I would say I can see that that is corresponding to to this. So I know that that's sixty degrees. I also know that this is alternate to both of those angles. In fact, so that's sixty degrees. Oh, I think I might have done it because now. These three angles must add up to 180. So um, 80 degrees plus 60 degrees plus X is going to equal to 180 degrees. And, and so that's X is 40 degrees, isn't it? Um, I'll show you how I did that. So we've got 180 degrees. I minus these two. Um, and so we've got minus 80 degrees. Then minus 60 degrees. Minusing the 80 takes me down to 100. Minusing the 60 after that takes me down to 40. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's pause the video and have a go at another one. So we've been asked to work out the size of angle DEF. Um, well, uh, we may be using another rule which I've not talked about in this one yet, but let's see if we need to. Um, so we see that it tells us that uh, parallelogram A, B, C, D, uh, so in other words, it's a parallelogram, that would mean that this is parallel, so C to D is parallel to A to uh, B to A. Also, C to B is parallel with D to A. I'm not sure how if we're going to be able to use that in some, some way, but um, I know that um, this is corresponding, okay? So that would mean that uh, that would mean that uh, we can we, we can say that 180 degrees. So basically, uh, C and B A is equal to 180 degrees minus 58 degrees. So that's going to be 122 degrees. So 122 degrees um, because C C to B and D to A are parallel then this is also co-interior with this one. Um, so I just do 180 minus 22, or 122, and I'm going to get 58 degrees again. Now this, uh, so I don't have to use the rule that I was worrying about, which is that opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal to each other, but we can see I've shown that using a different method. Um, and... B, we can go back to the first one that B to A and C to D are corresponding. 
So, no, they're not. Uh, yes, sorry, C to D and B to A are parallel, so therefore B, A, D and C, D, A are co-interior, so they're going to add up to 180, but also um, I can, which would therefore make this 122, but also because it's opposite and a parallelogram that shows us another reason it's equal to 122. Uh, we can see that this angle is um, a vertically opposite angle, so that's going to be 122 degrees. And finally, the uh, this angle here is an isosceles triangle, so we can see that um, this angle and this angle are going to be the same, and all three angles have to add up to 180. So I take 180 degrees, I minus 122 from it, and I get um, 50, uh, 58 degrees. Uh, and that that's going to be divided into two for these two angles. So 58 degrees divided into two is going to be, well, 50 divided by two is 25, and eight, so 20, 29 degrees. So that's the answer to the question. Okay, so we'll start the video there and ne next video is gonna be on angles in polygons.